avoid speakers that look like this at all costs because they already are hamstrung by a poor tweeter implementation. Today's gonna to be a discussion about what to avoid when looking for or designing speakers. And this is really a great indication, just a first glance by looking at the speaker, right away you know if it's something you need to avoid. And that is when a speaker is surface mounted instead of flush mounted. Well, what do I mean when I say surface mounted? Well, let me show you. Surface mounted would be when the tweeter sits flat on top of the baffle. And for those who don't know, the baffle is going to be the front facing part of the speaker in most cases where your woofer, your tweeter, your mid range are placed, right? So this is what I'm calling a baffle right now. Even though it's not an enclosure, it's still a baffle because that's where the tweeter is mounted. And as you can see from this, let me move my head a little bit here. See how the tweeter sits on top of the baffle? What happens when you have a tweeter that is mounted on top of the baffle is that the sound radiated from the dome tweeter at lower frequencies radiates omnidirectionally. So it's all around at low frequencies and then at high frequencies, it's more directional. So it's beaming basically. Now for a one inch dome tweeter, that's going to be around six to seven kilohertz, give or take. But for those low frequencies, what happens is when the sound is radiated off to the side, well, it hits this point right here. And then that point all along the rounds of the edges becomes other point sources of sound. And those are called diffraction points. And when you have a diffraction point, it plays back with the sound that's coming directly from the tweeter to you. So you have mismatches in sound characteristics that's going out into the world or out into the room. Now the same things can be said for a tweeter that's playing on a baffle. And then as it hits this edge of the baffle, that's another diffraction point. But for this video, I'm strictly talking about what happens when you flush mount or surface mount a tweeter. Now a flush mount a tweeter is gonna look like this, where the tweeter sits flush with the baffle. So there's no edge going from the tweeter flange to the baffle. So you may be wondering, why does that matter? Well, as you can guess, when we talked about the diffraction points from the tweeter flange, when the tweeter is flush mounted, sitting flush down into the baffle, those diffraction points are non-existent. So what does that equate to? Well, that equates to better linearity on axis and off axis. Now, practically speaking, I know that you're wondering, because it's, it's a reasonable question, do you hear those diffraction elements? And I think that what it really boils down to is how severe those diffraction elements are. I would say that you want to avoid them at all costs. And the reason I say that is not so much from the pure perspective of just what the measurements show on axis, but what the measurements show off axis. Because you got to remember that what you hear in a room with a speaker is the culmination of the direct sound that's coming directly from the speaker and the reflected sound that's going off to the side of the speaker, off to the side walls, and then coming back at you and arriving at your ear. You want those sounds to be pretty much the same within reason. And anytime that there's a difference, you're gonna notice some differences in timbre. So let me show you some data of what I'm talking about. First of all, we're gonna start with the on-axis response. In blue is the tweeter flush mounted. In red is the tweeter surface mounted. And you can see that the flush mounted response looks much more smooth and linear as opposed to in red where the tweeter is surface mounted. There is a bump from around two kilohertz to about five kilohertz followed by a dip that's centered around eight and a half kilohertz or so. Then a bump again above that frequency. So it's very nonlinear when surface mounted, but that's just one point in space. What happens when you're talking about the off axis sound? In this case, I'm providing an example of the normalized response. And what this is, is the sound that's off axis compared to the sound that's on axis. Ideally, what you want is you want this very dark red and then the other colors to be smooth and follow a general linear fashion. And what we see, however, is there's a bit of ballooning that starts around three kilohertz where the sound kind of constricts off axis, and then it balloons back open off axis again, and then it constricts again. Now what this means is that the sound that's radiated off axis into the room 
is going to be stronger around 7 kilohertz to about 10 kilohertz. I can equate that, just looking at the data alone, to telling you that you're going to have more sibilance in the room because the sound that is radiating off axis into the room is going to be stronger than the sound that's arriving to your ear first from the on axis sound. And the bummer about that is you cannot simply equalize that sound to flat. So for instance, if you thought, well, this doesn't sound right, I'm going to drop this down with EQ. Well, yeah, in the room, it may show that you've done that on your RTA, but the problem still exists in the timbre matching, as opposed to using a flush mounted design and getting these results. See how the response now is much more linear in fashion. Now this isn't perfect, but this is the exact same $25 tweeter shown in two different mounting methods. And you can see that the flush mounted version looks much more smooth compared to the surface mounted version. And this is gonna be equalizable. Is that a word? A lot more easily than the surface mounted response is. Now, all of this data was captured using my Clipple near field scanner in the horizontal baffle configuration, which makes it super easy and super accurate to get anechoic data for pretty much any driver. This is on a four foot diameter baffle. And as you can see, the microphone is scanning around the tweeter area. The cool thing about this software is also that it understands where the baffle edges are. So the actual four foot diameter baffle edges, it can say, hey, I know that's a baffle edge. I'm not going to factor that into the performance of this particular drive unit. I'm going to mitigate that. I'm going to take that out and I'm going to provide you the data as if this drive unit was on an actual infinite baffle. And that's really it. It's not a very dense topic. It's one that's pretty simple. I've seen that Zaf has covered this in his website years back. So this is nothing new. I'm not presenting new information. I'm not pretending to, but I think it's something that's useful to go over every now and again, because as more people start getting into DIY, and especially when you're starting to look at speakers that are really budget minded, you'll see a lot of these in those budget minded speakers where they'll just put the tweeter on the baffle and call it a day. Well, that's a crap design. Avoid that at all costs. And it may sound strong wording, I'm sure, but then go and look at the number of cheap speakers that have flush mounted tweeters. Now off the bat, those flush mounted designs are already at an advantage. And I'm not saying that they all will sound better, right? That's, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is it's good design practice. Why would you design a speaker from a handicap position off the bat when all you got to do is just router out the edge a little bit and stick that tweeter down in there? That provides smoother on axis response and smoother off axis response. There's much less diffraction. In fact, there's no diffraction from the tweeter and there's better sound carried out into the room. Not only that, but even as you go off axis, so let's say that you need to move to different positions in your room to listen to the speaker. Well, it's gonna sound more close to the same as it does in that primary listening position because the off axis sound matches more closely to the on axis sound in a flush mounted design than it does a surface mounted design. Now, my buddy Ron at Impulse Audio talked about this to some degree uh, a couple years ago, and it's not the exact same topic, but he does go into diffraction elements, and I really encourage you to watch that video. I'll try to remember to bookmark it up here in the corner so you can check that out when you get some time. But suffice it to say, what I'm trying to warn all of you is avoid speakers that look like this at all costs because they already are hamstrung by poor tweeter implementation. And if you see a design that looks like that, tell your buddies, don't buy that. Send them here. I'll explain why. Now, all this data is going to be on my website. It'll be under the Peerless D whatever, can't remember the model number of this particular tweeter, but it'll be under there. If you want to check it out, I'll have the link in my description below. Uh, if you appreciated this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel and you are interested in this kind of stuff and, and more, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so you'll be notified when I do more videos. And sometimes I just randomly go live. So if you wanna join me for live chats, make sure you hit that notifications bell as well. Uh, thank you to everyone who supports this channel. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you for anybody that uses those random affiliate links that I do. All of that helps me you know, afford to buy this stuff and to buy the products and materials that I need to keep doing these kind of reviews. And I really do enjoy it. I really truly, truthfully, Hope you learned something and I hope you enjoy this stuff as much as I do. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will talk to you all later. Take care.
Peace.